have understood that uh, since the bidding, beginning of uh, uh, ENAC, we've, uh, you know, we've assisted to the construction of a pretty unique uh, faculty that has uh, accomplished very many uh, good things since its creation. We are lucky to have all the deans here today and in uh, Rhode Island. Of course, the challenges for EPFL and for ENAC are evolving. 20 years ago, at the time of its creation, uh, we were not yet talking about digitalization. Uh, the climate disruption uh, did not occupy the you know, a central place in the public debate, uh, even though the scientific evidence was already there. So we'll start with a Mentimeter question. <laughs> Donnez votre avis. And there it will be a, the format word cloud. If you can send the slide with the question, and then we'll uh, ask the deans, starting with Andrew Berry, for the comment. The question, the general question, I repeat, les défis de l'enseignement face aux enjeux de la durabilité, educational challenges, challenges for, uh, to sustainability issues. Let's translate the title like this. Okay, so, Andrew, can you comment on perhaps empathy, flexibility, creativity, and, and, and you can stand up and uh, look for a word that is perhaps in a smaller, in a smaller size. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, first of all, I think we need to understand, as we've heard today, what the challenges are. In fact, the grand challenges. We can think about the um, need to supply food, minerals, water, energy, etc. Uh, climate change, mitigation, adaptation. This is a big topic for us. Uh, production methods which don't create pollution. This, observed, this occurs in every aspect of what we do. Um, urbanism, the spread of urbanism, growth of urban centers. And very importantly, I see social sciences, decision making. How do we have equitable, fair, uh, informed decision making? So these involve a lot of skills. Uh, but underneath them all are the words that I see here. Empathy, creativity, communication. These have to build on the scientific and professional uh, knowledge bases that we impart, hopefully, in our programs. Uh, but in addition, it means that the students have to be exposed to interdisciplinary approaches, to think beyond merely what they learn in one class or in one program, but in the totality of what we do in ENAC and even beyond at EPFL. So I think we have a very rich flower bed, if I call it that, but to make the flowers uh, grow, there's many different varieties that we can have. Every student will go in a different direction, that's the opportunity that they have. Uh, but these, uh, the sum total of this should be the ability to solve problems, to think creatively, uh, to work I interactively. And I think this is a very good foundation for any professional career going forward. Thank you. Well, I didn't dare to present the deans because Martin Vetterly did it today, but uh, Laurent Vuillet, the uh, uh, guitarist, rock guitarist, Marilyn Anderson, the entrepreneur with Oculite, also she's a professor, but uh, Andrew B Barry, of course. Um, well, you know, you know him very well, uh, Claudia as well. Mark Palange. You are now president of the University of Rhode Island, right? Uh, interesting. Uh, you told me that you would introduce sport lessons in the University of Rhode Island. That, that's a bit, you know, uh, <laughs> it's not in, 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 in the cloud, sport lessons. But interestingly, you said we need to introduce sport lessons at the University of Rhode Island. I, I don't know if it would be the case at ENAC. Well, second to comment on the cloud, Marilyn. 
Yes, thank you very much. Um, it's amazing to see this world map, I think, today and compare it to what we would expect it 20 years ago. I think we would have had a very different type of answer, maybe more focused on actual disciplines or skills as we used to call them. And now we see a lot of words related to the people, to who we are as biological and emotional beings and to our capacity to engage with others and to reinvent and not just follow rules. And I think words like adaptability, flexibility, creativity, empathy, I mean, I won't repeat all the big words, but I think they are very relevant to today's uh, era of immense change, where even the notion of job and of work is probably going to change, where we have to readapt and to uh, probably have many different activities, contributions to society over our lifetimes. And I think all of these are uh, extremely important to note and then to react to and act about. And actually to just take the, uh, the little note you made um, regarding uh, introducing sports at Rhode Island, I would fully agree that this is a great idea. Uh, mental health and physical health are part of creativity and productivity. Uh, there is scientific evidence to show that. So I think that these words, as well as what we know uh, coming from science today, tells us how important it is to remain relevant as biological being. And this, uh, in this, I take the mirror of the artificial intelligence that is going to coexist with us and to make sure that we remain critical thinkers and people that can both have very deep competences and also can engage in a dialogue with people that are not like us. Thank you, Marilyn. Mark uh, Parland, you, you, uh, you, you were the second dean of uh, ENAC, so what is your comment on the uh, word map? We well, thank you. Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, it feels, uh, I, I wish I could be there. All our undergraduate students are arriving today, so um, so I have to be here for, for that. Um, maybe a couple of comments uh, uh, in terms of the word map. A lot of the words there in uh, the United States, people have the habit of referring to them as so-called soft skills. But I don't think that that's a very good word, soft skills, it, it sounds soft, but it's really more about durable skills. And I think uh, the points that both uh, Andrew and Marilyn made are, are very important. And in terms of the sports, uh, uh, you know, motion is uh, medicine. I think we all know that. Uh, our Institute for Neuroscience here at Rhode Island has really been doing quite a bit of research on the importance of, uh, of movement um, and the, the links to obviously uh, mental health challenges that we are seeing uh, uh, in society, but certainly at the universities is extremely important. And so that's part of having you know, something to fall back on. So there's of course, uh, uh, mental health, physical health, and spiritual health, and they're, they're all important in terms of the development of the complete person. And I just, maybe a uh, final thing is uh, ENAC, uh, when it started, and Laurent, you know, uh, with all the, the faculty at that time, really uh, pushed this idea, pushed the ensemble. So there was a lot of depth in one's area of uh, engineering or architecture or urban sciences. But there was also this openness to collaboration and working with people and really, you know, realizing the excellent contributions that different fields can bring to solve uh, complex uh, problems. So I think uh, I would say that 20 years ago, we knew that we had the, the climate uh, crisis. I think it was some 35 years ago, we were already talking about the fingerprint of humans on the earth system. And, uh, and I think there's uh, obviously a lot to do around questions of energy, water, health, uh, and obviously geopolitical instability is also an important piece. So anyway, uh, thrilled to be here and uh, happy to hear everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Laurent, you were the first. The first oh. dean of ENAC. What yeah, is your comment on that? 30 years ago, my, e uh, my, my eyes were much better. So, you know, <laughs> I just uh, go 
the closure. <laughs> so hi, Mark. It's a pleasure to, to see you uh, on screen. Uh, I, I really love this uh, creativity in the center because this is all about it. And I would uh, rather ask Mark to introduce art in the university rather than sport because every knows that sport is not very healthy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so we can talk about that. Um, uh, no, but looking at the and a different name that I see here, I uh, remind me of, of the first days of, of the uh, creation of ENAC. Uh, this is 20 years now, but as a matter of fact, it started in 2000, and we had like a year and a half to, to think about this new organization of EPFL, and it became clear to all of us, uh, uh, students, professors involved in the, the creation of ENAC, that uh, the, the, the complexity the complexity or the problems we have to solve together could not be solved without getting all these disciplines to work together. And this is something that is related to creativity because, as you know, creativity is most of the time at the interface between knowledge and between disciplines. And creativity is in the contact with others. This is why I'm not surprised to see these soft skills, as you say, Mark, you know, because maybe Terrible. what is uh, absolutely understood by everyone in the room is that we have to have engineering and architectural knowledge and this is uh, this is given so to speak what is written here is additional thing that would permit then all the actors on the uh, uh, architecture and, and engineering sciences to, to work together I I like it flexibility adaptability yeah okay when you say it's obvious well we'll see uh, Claudia, um, what do you see in this word map? And uh, yeah, I have this question for you. Uh, you have this transversal skills mm -hmm. uh, in the T-shaped education of Enoch, and you have the vertical part of the T. Uh, is, is, there is perhaps a risk that the, 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 the or horizontal part of it becomes big and the vertical one gets, you know, too short. It, you know, uh, what I want to say is, you know, those skills in engineering, in architecture, uh, are they still uh, as, uh, do you spend as much time on them if you have to spend all this time on the mm -hmm. transversal skills? Yeah. No, thank you very much, and uh, thanks. So I, I don't will not repeat what all uh, the other deans said before, but uh, but indeed, I think uh, when I was listening to Laurent, I was thinking, are we going back to the roots? If these were the key words that were in the beginning of ENAC, are we redoing the same thing now, or is it are the same things still valid today? What what struck me actually when I was looking at it uh, were kind of two aspects. On the one hand, ethics. We heard quite a lot of talks that ethics, values, play an important role, justice. How can we as engineers, as architects, be just? How can we contribute to justice? And the other one that struck me a bit was also flexibility. So how can we teach our students to be flexible? And what does it mean, flexible in mind, flexible in addressing the different problems? And there I would say it does not necessarily mean that we have to give up on the on the deepness of the education, but that we have to include some of these maybe soft skills while we are educating the students. Let me take an example. If we look, for example, at critical thinking, you can say this is a soft skill, but in each of the courses that are taught, we can foster also critical thinking. So this is, has not to be a separate course, but can be within a course to really critically reflect on what we are actually doing, the technology they are actually developing. The same thing with systems thinking. It's if we have or produce, for example, a bench out of recycled material, well, it might be interesting to also figure out if all this were done all along, where will the material come from? What will it impact along the value chain? So I think these, these so said soft skills can be easily be integrated into the current teaching curricula. And Proche Ensemble is one good example also for that. Thank you. Please, there is one word that I don't see, innovation. <laughs> I would say innovation is part of the process. Maybe it's not a skill, 
so mm -hmm. you answered very well. <laughs> um, but indeed, innovation is part of the of, of the process of going through to EPFL and, and to try to uh, both uh, look at what we learned and how to apply this to society, but to make uh, it very uh, really available to society. I guess the entrepreneurship is part of that picture. And during my time as dean, one of the projects or initiatives uh, that I led was uh, indeed to reinforce innovation and enact through this inner seed program which allowed to go to the junior members of the ENAC uh, researchers and to try to push uh, innovation out of the lab to, to not stay shy of going out of the lab because we are a faculty, a school that uh, has so much uh, diversity and so much heterogeneity in a way uh, with a lot of social impact and a, a lot of direct connection with society but maybe not as evident path towards innovation like robotics or mechanical engineering and, and things like that and I think uh, our work is extremely relevant but to be to take advantage of this relevance has to bring it to the real world as well. And so this is complementary to both education and research, which are the other core pillars um, of both ENAC and EPFL. Thank you. Uh, another comment on, on innovation. The fact perhaps that you don't have as many startups spinning off from ENAC compared to other faculties in EPFL. Well, uh, I would say this is not actually true. So oh. we are ramping up rapidly based as so, uh, Marilyn started with the InnoSeed. We took it up and we now created a pipeline of innovation based on really first getting directly from the lab, then moving into the Inno grants of, uh, of EPFL and uh, creating startups. So, and I think with, uh, with our um, ecosystem manager who also fosters the Inno Swiss relationship, I think we have really been ramping up on, on startups mm -hmm. and uh, we, we are moving into the right direction. I don't think that we are completely competing. Fr from a distance, we're Ma there. Mark Parlange, from, dis from a distance, how do you assess uh, the training in terms of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship is it really important to do that while you are uh, uh, in uh, in uh, in a uh, process of you know getting educated bachelor and master uh, yeah uh, so uh, first of all i have to say uh, epfl is probably the best example around the world of a university that really uh, channeled this entrepreneurial spirit that the new generation of students and uh, faculty have. I use it as an example all the time. Uh, if you go back uh, to the arrival of uh, Patrick Abisher as the president and where he, you know, where Western Switzerland sat and where things have moved. And so you certainly, if you look at, uh, you know, MIT's tech magazine each year, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, there's always these companies from AQ Blanc, Switzerland, that are ranked in the top 50 in the world. That's also just a sign of, uh, you know, really that channeling, that early channeling. I think the word innovation, uh, I first heard it actually at uh, EPFL be used in in uh, in the way that I think Marilyn also spoke to. So um, very important, very important for us. Uh, you know, I, I'll just quickly tell you about Rhode Island. We are the ocean state. We have uh, we're the smallest state in the United States, but we have uh, and excuse me, uh, but we use uh, the English system here. So 420 miles of coastline and uh, that's that's our big push is really around blue technology, uh, uh, the blue economy. So offshore wind, uh, aquaculture, coastal resilience, uh, underwater robotics and so forth. I, I think that uh, a lot of what was done there in a very open way, you know, really having EPFL as a center, attracting people really as a destination school is extremely important. And so I hope to be able to replicate some of that uh, that you've done so well at uh, the University of Rhode Island. Okay. Thank you, Laurent. Okay. And then Andrew, perhaps, uh, well, uh, yeah, I'll let you answer, but, but uh, the next question really is how do you add courses, how do you enrich the curriculum, the offer, to meet those new challenges? 
uh, yeah, I can come to that, but I'd like to, to say a few words about innovation because I really think, and knowing the, the construction sector quite well, it's not so much a, a problem of EPFL or a problem of INAC. It is much more a problem of, of having this innovation in the construction business, in the construction uh, uh, industry. And uh, I wanted to tell to the students that are there, or, or the, the graduates, one best way to push innovation is through uh, 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 diplomas or people just coming out of school and bringing new ideas. And uh, this brings me the question, uh, many questions about industry. For example, how much do they invest in industry companies for research and development? Almost zero. And they rely on administration uh, to, 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 to finance research. And this is a big problem, I think, in our industry, in architecture and engineering. If you buy a medicine, it's obvious that half of the price would be for, for uh, research and development. In our uh, industry, it's not the case. Another example, continuing education. We probably, or you students, here we are in the Saal, know much more things that uh, the people who are going to be your, your superior in the, in, uh, in the business you will be in. So it means, why don't we f put something like uh, mandatory uh, education for professionals, like they do in medicine? In medicine, they are forced to do it. We don't, etc. And so innovation, I think, can be much, much better developed. Then you have to offer this uh, uh, lifelong training that should be perhaps part of the uh, offer of uh, INAC. Maybe not lifelong training. Let's talk about, first of all, what we do here at EPFL for our undergraduates and master students. <laughs> now, what is innovation? Innovation is not simply producing a product that becomes a unicorn company. Innovation is identifying a system or problem and bringing forth a solution which relies on innovative thinking. That's what innovation is. And our program is exactly geared towards this. How is that? It does it by giving the students the skill sets in the basic sciences, in data analysis, in mathematical modeling, in machine learning, all these areas which the students can bring together to innovate solutions. Now, the question you asked before is, where should the programs go in the future? And we've heard it today already. We have this avalanche of data from many different sources. And by the way, of course, many sources of data have nothing to do with privacy. <laughs> Air temperature outside, for instance. There's many, many sources of data. Uh, EPFL and many other institutions have a data science emphasis. Uh, we heard already earlier today the value in taking this approach. If you ask me how our programs are going to change, I can see building on the basic scientific knowledge that all our disciplines have is to bring together these more recent tools which come out, of, frankly, out of our labs, uh, as we as professors at EPFL develop, and bringing them into the mainstream into our teaching programs. So data analysis, visualization, machine learning, uh, multi-scale modeling, uh, all these things have applications which we have to use to address the challenges at the present and future. So we do innovate, and I can see how this will feed into how our programs change into the future. Well, let, let's be... Okay, uh, very good point. Let, let's, let's be more specific. At one point, you have to add some new courses. I saw the word ethics. Should, he, should you add a course in ethics? Uh, life uh, cycle uh, analysis. Uh, well, very important when we're talking about obsolescence and uh, green, um, um, okay. So, should you add a course, a share in, or a lab in uh, uh, <laughs> life cycle analysis, Claudia? Well, we are just, th this is a debate that we are currently having at the uh, uh, at the level of ENAC, at the level of, uh, of EPFL, obviously life cycle analysis is very important and we used to have a, a, a professor on life cycle analysis in environmental engineering. Um, and um, yeah, 
and, and, and he left. But uh, I, I do think that this is something that we have to look into. And I would say not life cycle analysis alone, but life cycle analysis related to circular economy, related to the link with economics, to really have the, the systemic view of, of, of the system. And we do teach our students life cycle analysis in the bachelor, so there is a course already looking into that. But maybe let me follow up a bit on, on what Andrew said. I do believe that these digital tools will be a huge asset for our students to, to innovate. I, I do think that we have to enrich them in the sense of collaboration, uh, I found it impressive, our second uh, keynote speaker, who really was saying, well, how can we use these tools and also to talk to practitioners to move to that step? So uh, we heard a lot about communication, uh, uh, a lot about collaboration. How do we involve the stakeholders together with us, with the digital tools, in order to also impact with what we are doing. And there I, I think that the Living Lab saw the real world laboratories are a key point that we should follow up. And that can be done within semester thesis, that can be done within design projects where we are already collaborating with practice and just leveraging on the tools that we have by adding one component more or by adding an educational component more. But I think this should be possible to, to reach. Thank you. Uh, Mark Berlinger, I, I would like to hear you on the topic of uh, lifelong learning. Uh, yeah, perhaps from your point of view in the US, but also as a former dean of ENAC. Lifelong yeah, I, it was interesting to hear uh, Laurent's comments earlier. Uh, so when I left uh, EPFL, I went to University of British Columbia and uh, to be Dean of Engineering there, you have to pass the engineering exam. So, and then each year there's this lifelong learning uh, piece that you have to take uh, more courses. And they're not bad actually. So, uh, so I, I think that uh, uh, there, there's other fields in addition to those that you mentioned, Laurent, that, that probably have that. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just fundamental. I think that uh, certainly, uh, if anything, the pandemic has shown us uh, different ways that we can learn and teach and interact. It's it's not the uh, older model, so I think it's in, important. We we're lucky to be at a university. We're lucky to be you know in a situation where we have these bright, young, uh, new uh, creative people coming each year, challenging us, pushing us. So we're in that environment. But I think if you're actually uh, in uh, industry, I, you know, it's it's important to be able to be challenged. Otherwise, you may find yourself uh, just doing the same old, same old uh, every year. Actually, Laurent, I, uh, you, you mentioned the construction industry. Uh, so one of my friends, when I was uh, most recently in Australia, was telling me that if a Roman came on to a construction site uh, today, uh, they would not be so surprised by what they see. It wouldn't be uh, shockingly different. I, I don't know if that's true, uh, but uh, anyway, I put that out as a, maybe a challenge or a thought <laughs> for you. Because, you know, the, the, there is those days, I, don't, I don't, don't know if it's the same in the U.S., but a lot of architects bashing because we see an urbanist bashing because we see our cities, even the new eco quartier in Lausanne, lots of concrete, not many trees. And we have the impression that the industry and the architects are always, you know, late, avec une guerre de retard, as we say. Uh, how, how, how do you, you know, fight this trend, this inertia, inertia is that in, cette inertie? Mm -hmm. uh, voilà. Qui pour prendre la défense des architectes? <laughs> well, first of all, I think from an educational standpoint, which is, I think, the point of this panel, uh, we have a lot to learn from architecture, uh, which is a design-driven discipline and which also allows you to develop design thinking, which then means that you're comfortable with ill-defined problems, not just with well-defined problems. And I think engineering has to, uh, a lot to borrow from that because that means we can be comfortable in both and also be confronted with a very open-ended, complex problem, which is actually all the real problems that await us are 
complex and multidimensional and ill-defined, and therefore we have this capacity to think uh, in a way that we are not afraid to attack a problem with a totally open field. So I think this is a very important lesson or, or, or learning to acquire from the design world, uh, which actually has uh, made also the, the, I would say, the popularity or the craving of our students for project-oriented um, courses or project-oriented uh, uh, learning. And this too is in a way closer to architecture than it is um, to, to engineering in the sense that even the uh, solid decathlon uh, adventure that we, we lived has been leading to entrepreneurship, to changing the lives of the students, but also for them to realize how much when you believe in a project you can give everything you have, all your energy, and you learn an immense amount through this. So, um, so I think we, there is definitely no time to bash on, on anyone, but to recognize what each contribution is to society. And we should not mix up architecture with urbanism, for example. These are two very different things. They aim at uh, different uh, uh, sort of uh, deliverables, let's say, and they have to work hand in hand for a success. So it is true that uh, as educators, we have to bring more of the knowledge of what the implications of our decisions are, and I think this goes back to the ethics. Uh, having a uh, learning or acquiring knowledge about ethics means that when we develop new algorithms, we can also bring in this awareness that whatever we decide to optimize might have ultimately consequences we didn't foresee. So I, I think there is a, the, the, the question is more complex, um, and, and I think we have to take what is good about all the disciplines that we represent at ENAC. Thank you. Be before uh, concluding, uh, you, I will ask you to conclude, to, to say in one or two sentences, what sh uh, are the top educational priorities for students uh, by leaving ENAC? That, that will be the conclusion. E each of you will, you know, in a few words, uh, say a, a, a few words of a conclusion. But before that, I, I would ask a pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, well, ambitious, ambitious question. Uh, this morning, uh, I discussed with Mr. Messerly, uh, and he he told me, uh, uh, perhaps you know, in in the late 19th century, uh, Switzerland created. Les Écoles Polytechniques, EPF to tackle industrialization. We should now build a new and very ambitious school to tackle uh, the climate challenge. Uh, and uh, Switzerland could be at the forefront, a pioneer. Uh, and I, d does it make sense to uh, build a new school? Uh, uh, Perhaps there is something to it, you know, because the climate challenge is as big as the uh, industrialization challenge. Well, I can answer that question with an opinion, and the opinion is that already at EPFL and in the ETH domain, the larger ETH domain, there is an immense depth of knowledge on these topics. Now, if one wants to even without probably a huge budget uh, commitment to reorganize our efforts, there could be some mileage uh, in that. So I think uh, it, it doesn't have to be a revolution in the sense that we need to find two billion francs somewhere to do this. It uh, could be done. And I think it's an interesting idea. Um, maybe just, are we at the wrapping up? stage, uh, what the students should take away, or? No, no, not yet. Okay, uh, all right, please, so I'll stop uh, there. Who wants to answer this pretty provocative uh, idea? Uh, I mean, does it make sense or not? Laurent? Yeah, I, I think climate change belongs to the, the largest mega trends we, we have now. It's, it's a subject, it's an object, it's a, it's a project. So uh, I don't think a school should be organized by such thematics, you see? Uh, we can solve many problems. Transportation was discussed uh, before, no? urbanization, another theme, etc. Energy systems. So why should we, at every single mega trend, create a new school? No, I don't think so. I think our education is so profound and multidisciplinary that we should, in the end, have the, the tools to solve these problems. 
and, and, and we do. And if, if I may, since I, I talk now, there's something that I like very much to talk about and nobody wants to talk about it. Just I, I give you as a uh, food for thoughts. Uh, nowadays, organizations and, and companies are more and more evaluated with an acronym that says ESG, Environmental, Social and Governance. Mm -hmm. I like this term governance because I think that most of the problems we have solving these complex problems are linked to the very poor governance that we have. And these governments, to go back to what Mark was saying, is probably coming back to the Romans, you know, a very, uh, very old way of organizing things. And if you look how administrations are organized per discipline, you know, how even uh, engineering firms are organized per discipline, do we have the right attitude towards system-oriented thinking? This, the, the right organization to do it. Uh, what, what are the, the laws? What are the, the, the rules, the standards? I think engineers and architects should question this uh, governance thing very much because uh, probably if you talk with, uh, with the local uh, or cantonal architects or engineers, you will notice that most of the, of the obstacles are linked somehow to organizational issues. Hmm? And uh, yeah. Thank you. So, conclusion, Mr. Parlance, you, you will start a, a two sentences uh, to answer the question, the top educational priorities for students when they leave, when they graduate from INAC. Please. I, I, I might not know the answer to that question, but I, I want to just pick up uh, on one thing, maybe that's not discussed uh, so much at uh, EPFL and ENAC uh, these days, but it will be coming. So Laurent mentioned the ESG, and certainly that's, uh, that's very important. And I would say globally, uh, you, you see it in Canada, Australia, across the US, and obviously uh, many parts of the world. But the, the other is uh, an issue which uh, was not uh, too much highlighted uh, in the word cloud was around uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, it is a big uh, piece, uh, I would say, in North America, both Canada and the US, in the sense that uh, um, you know, we were countries that were really colonialized. Uh, there was, uh, we have deep roots of uh, racism and disadvantage uh, here. It's, it's quite shocking uh, when you come back and you really confront it. Uh, of course, we had it in Australia as well. And so I think for, for students, it's a big piece around thinking about their education for the future. Is so, so the initials EDI uh, is, is, is Thank part you. of the education. Thank you. Try perhaps to be a bit shorter because Claudia oh. will have to conclude. Uh, Marilyn. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so uh, just starting with the climate change and sustainability topic, I think because this is core to ENAC, there is no silver bullet to answer that question. So it is about bringing all the, the disciplines and sectors, including governance and policy and behavior and technology, all of this together to answer. So not a single solution will solve, which means to me that in terms of the skills that the, uh, our students should acquire, they should have very deep competences in a, in a way that they can have a contribution that is unique and have the ability to engage with other stakeholders, people that are different from them, people that think differently, in order to work together, not by being generalists, but by having unique contributions in a dialogue with others and together in parallel contribu contributing to solving these kinds of problems. Thank you. Laurent Bouillet? Well, I'm a big fan uh, of basic sciences. I think that uh, our, our students have to live for 40 years and the more they have a deep knowledge, and I agree with uh, Marilyn on that, the more they will be uh, adapted to a changing world. So what we mean by basic sciences can be discussed. This is not only mathematics, physics, and, and chemistry. That can be other, other things, but this is important. And second, I would, I would like students to, to be trained for, for in, in as, as a project oriented teaching and uh, starting from the start to think globally, to think multidisciplinary and to work with, with other disciplines. Thank you. Andrew? 
So in my younger days, we used to hear the phrase, uh, think globally, act locally. The world is big, we make small changes, and somehow we change the big world. But in fact, that is wrong. The globe is small, and the human impact is massive. So I would change that to act locally, impact globally. And if our students can understand the deep meaning behind this phrase, then I think uh, that would be a great success for ENAC. Thank you, Claudia. Your turn to wrap up the whole day, this well, round table. <laughs> well, probably Thank I first uh, say my comment, then we finish this oh, all right, then okay. I wrap up. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> so so uh, I think that uh, I would probably put it in a different way. So I think our students will need to have three types of knowledge. On the one hand, system knowledge, what was meant before, understanding the problem, getting deep disciplinary knowledge, then goal knowledge, knowing where we want to go to and maybe with KPIs. And then what I think is the most important, transformational knowledge. How do I get from the current state, which we consider maybe unsustainable, to a more sustainable state. And this knowledge is the more probably one of the most difficult to acquire, and this is a challenge that we have ahead. Thank you. Then the conclusion, you, you stay here. Okay, <laughs> great, good. So I will not go through all the talks that we heard. I think I cannot really uh, summarize it perfectly, but what we could see when we were looking at the topics that emerged in the word clouds, when we were asking where would you like to collaborate with, with ENAC, Topics like climate change, energy, were very uh, at a very high priority. So I would say that on the one hand, it looks at the topics that we have chosen really are also in agreement with what our research partners think that, it, that is relevant and that we really can fo further kind of valorize of them and further them in with collaborating also within ENAC, within the EPFL, uh, EPFL and ETH domain and beyond. The second uh, aspect that I thought was very relevant is we need to further valorize on the digital. I think it was very interesting to see that we can valorize on urban platform, we can move into participation, collaboration, and how can we make use of our great digital tools that we are currently developing to create an impact in the world. The third aspect that really will probably also be with me in my thoughts is that the future challenge will be how to identify transition pathways leading to more sustainability. How can we even get a hold of them? We, we heard uh, by Messerly that it will be very important to design them. What is the role of governance, as was said? What is, what is the goal of science therein? And how can we make it uh, work together? And what I find most intriguing is how can we identify positive feedback loops which will lead reinforcing themselves to a pos more positive future. Within that, I also heard some few issues that I found important, namely trust, values and ethics, and how to include these aspects in our thinking and also in the teaching. And finally, a fourth point is that I think one key aspect that came up was also how to overcome our, our disciplinary silos, even though we are very good at ENAC to integrating them, maybe we can also further increase on that, but we can also embrace others and teach beyond ENAC how these can be done. And for students, I take home and I think what I found very interesting, the question of mental health. During the pandemic, this was a major topic. And I think we need to ensure that mental health of students is really kept in the future and that we do everything that mental health is there. Because without mental health, there will be, the students will not be able to learn, to innovate, to be creative. And for me, this is really one of the main topics that I found extremely exciting. This by listening also to my colleague deans. Thank you very much. Thank you.